Feeling jealous is actually quite natural, but what happens when it starts to overtake your life and damage your most precious relationships? Keep watching to understand how and why we get affected by jealousy, and most importantly, how you can stop it ruining your life and ruining your relationships with the people that matter the most to you. Jealousy is nothing new. One of the Ten Commandments is about envy. And you've all heard the problem, I've got the green-eyed monster. And in England, we have a funny expression called well gel. He's well gel, or she's well gel, which means they're extremely jealous. So it's all right to feel envious. I remember someone saying to me once, I envy you because you have a baby, but she said it with immense kindness. So we've always had this word to envy other people, to feel jealous, to feel that they have more than we have, that it's not fair that some people have love and wealth and looks and we don't have that. But it's got somewhat out of hand because of social media. Everyone on social media looks amazing. It's what I call being overexposed to fake images of perfection. We look at someone and go, look at them. They've got a perfect house, a perfect life, a perfect body, a perfect partner, perfect kids. No, that's not true, but it appears that way. And so jealousy tends to stem from comparing yourself with other people. 50 years ago, it was a lot easier not to know, but now we are in someone's home. We're in their life, we're in their water, we're often in their bedroom because they tell us everything so we have more material than ever before to compare ourselves with and we just feel so bad. So maybe you're just about to have a baby and you're excited, but your friend is a hotshot lawyer having a baby back at work in a week, has got a perfect body, baby is perfect, and you think, oh, I, I, I felt okay, but I don't now. We feel okay until we start to compare ourselves with other people and think, they're better than me. They have more than me. They're more fortunate than me. And then we feel jealous, and then the jealousy begins to consume us until some of us start checking our partner's phone, looking at other people's Facebook profiles. And jealousy is not at all confined to your intimate relationship. I'm jealous of my partner. People find them attractive. They come on to them. I, I think my partner's cheating. My partner's looking at these gorgeous women or men who are better than me. That's bad enough, but then we become jealous of our sister. My sister's always been the favorite. She can do no wrong. You know, I work really hard and my parents give her money that they don't give me because she's feckless. I'm jealous of someone at work who gets more praise than me, who's the boss's favorite. But when we peel back jealousy, what is it really all about? It's about you comparing yourself and believing that someone else is better than you. Jealousy feeds right into feelings of I am not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not attractive enough. You know, many, many years ago as a single parent, and I had a neighbor who lived in my street and she was a model and she had a perfect husband. He worshiped her. She looked amazing. She had a perfect little girl who was friends with my little girl. She'd always say to me, you know, why is your little girl so bad? And I said, hey, my daughter's not bad. She's actually what's called age appropriate. You know, we're out in the park and you shout your little girl stop and she stops. And my little girl keeps going and I have to shout stop three times because She's not a dog, she doesn't come to heal. She's a normal child, but I always felt a little bit inadequate around her. She was beautiful, she had a perfect house, she had a full-time nanny, and this perfect child who turned out to have some issues later. She was very, very introverted, and then her husband left her, and then she got very fat, and I'm not saying that to gloat, but I remember 10 years later, she wrote to me and said, hey, you know, your life is amazing. I, I envy you. And I thought, isn't that funny? I allowed myself to feel inferior next to her because she had a perfect picture book life. Her life was like an advert. Everything was perfect. But underneath it wasn't perfect. And there was I in the background, single mother, child that wasn't perfectly behaved. And yet somehow 
she managed to envy me. When I was a single parent, mothers at my daughter's would say, well, you're so lucky not having a husband. I have to go home every night and make dinner and do the laundry. Well, isn't that funny? They envy me. I might have envied them. Wow, you got this perfect family life, the husband, the car, the job, someone else helping with the bills, and I don't have that. It's very easy to look at someone and think, you have a perfect life, but you have no idea what is going on in someone's life. You know, many years ago, this stunningly beautiful Asian woman stepped into my office, dressed head to toe in couture. She was breathing gorgeous. And my first look was, oh, I want to be you. I want to look like you and dress like you. Doesn't mean I don't love being me. And we sat down and she began to tell me her problem that she drank every day and she had to stop. And so I hypnotized her to stop drinking. And she came back and said, actually, I've got a bigger problem. Now, you know, I'm married to someone I don't love. It was an arranged marriage. He's very nice. He's immensely kind. That's the problem. He's a nice guy. And when he touches me, I want to die because I'm not attracted to him. I was made to marry him. And I can't leave him because in my culture, if I leave, he will get custody of our children. So I have to stay in this marriage for another 20 years. And the only way I can handle his touch is to drink. And I remember thinking, wow, I feel ashamed of myself. I envied her. She's immensely wealthy, beautiful, immaculate, stunning. I don't envy her anymore. I'm free to do whatever I like, to be with the person I want to be with, and to leave if I want to, and to still keep my children. So it's very easy to look at someone's life to see the exterior. They're beautiful, they're stunning, they're wealthy, they're talented, and I'm not, and I just feel inadequate in comparison. So how do you stop it? Well, you must stop comparing yourself to anyone. You are unique. There's no one in the world exactly like you. They'll never again be someone exactly like you. You're unique. You have unique qualities. You have unique gifts. And while you're busy looking at someone else, you don't know how unique you are. I'll tell you another funny story. Many years ago, one of my clients who's immensely wealthy invited me to a dinner party at her house. And I duly turned up. And my friend, who's an acupuncturist, also turned up. And this house was just amazing. I mean, it was so stunning. When I went home, I thought, oh, I thought my house was amazing, but now I've seen hers, it doesn't feel quite so amazing. And then my friend, the acupuncturist, said, oh, hey, last night I went to that house. I was so happy back at my house. I, I loved being back at my house. It's normal, it's cozy, it's messy, it's real. I couldn't bear to live in a palace like that. I would hate to live like that. And sometimes I go to clients who live on gated estates with three layers of security. They live in kind of mansions that are so sterile. I think, oh no, I can't wait to come back to my normal house, my normal life, because I don't envy that. So you must look at, first of all, what are you envious of? Is it someone's life? Is it their body? Is it their children? Is it what you think they have? And remember that all that glistens is not gold. It may appear perfect, but it's no more perfect than your life. You see, things don't make you happy. A beautiful home, a beautiful body, a beautiful wardrobe, someone making your juices, that does not make you happy. What makes you happy? are your relationships with people. That is the thing guaranteed to give you joy. A real person you're having a real relationship with. And I do remember years ago being asked to visit a very, very famous movie star in her Hollywood mansion. And I went along and I went through the three layers of security, finally got to her house. She had a butler, a maid, someone doing her laundry. And I've never met anyone quite as lonely as this woman. Her husband had left her, her children were grown up, and she didn't do anything. She didn't have to shop. She didn't have to go to the dry cleaners. I thought, wow, she is more worse off than someone who worked in a bar. 
would go out at night with their friends, someone who worked in a store or an office went out every Friday night with the girls or with the other members of staff because she was disconnected. Her immense wealth, her immense privilege made her so lonely. I think she's the loneliest person I've ever met. But I couldn't say to her, hey, you need to go out because she had staff to do everything but no love in her life and I didn't ever envy her. In fact, I felt immensely sorry for her. And we're always looking at magazines about the latest celebrity whose relationship has gone wrong when they're supposed to have it. We look at the Kardashians and think, but that isn't real. That's not real, it's fake. So overexposure to fake images of perfection can make you feel inadequate because you're beginning the comparison. Here am I, I've got a home, got a job, got a body, got a partner, got a kid but they've got a better body, a better home, a better partner, better behaved children. So you're allowing yourself to believe something that is not true. You have no idea what is going on. Stop comparing and look at what you have. If you have love in your life, you are already immensely fortunate. If you have a home, you're fortunate. If you have money to pay your bills and put food on the table. You are fortunate someone on the other side of the world is envying you because it's all relative. When I go to Zimbabwe, I feel immensely privileged because I have a home. I have money. I can buy whatever food I want and a lot of the people I meet there really can't. So it really helps to go, wow, well, I'm envying someone who's up here Someone down here is envying me. There is only one antidote for envy and jealousy, and that is to stop comparing yourself. Yes, that person looks perfect, but who knows what is really going on? I'm me, I'm happy, I'm enough. I am enough. I accept myself for being enough. I know I'm enough. I'm worthy enough, lovable enough, good enough worthy enough just the way I am stops you feeling envy. And when you look at someone else, remember you're looking at a mirage. Yes, you're looking at Jennifer Aniston with her shiny glossy hair and a wonderful life, but both of her marriages have failed. That's not her fault. That doesn't make her less of a person, but it means that she may be envying you. You with your normal life and your laundry piling up and your kids smearing peanut butter all over the sofa, she may think, oh, I want that life. You don't know who is envying you while you are envying them. But envy is a green-eyed monster. While you're busy comparing yourself, you are diminishing yourself. You're putting yourself down. And the best way to stop being envious is this. Every day wake up and think about what you are grateful for. Gratitude is the highest frequency you can resonate at. And when you say, I'm so grateful, I'm here, I'm grateful, I'm healthy, I'm grateful I've got a great job, I'm grateful I have love. Gratitude is amazing. So when I went to this millionaire's amazing house, I came home and I thought, oh, my house looks really average now. But a few months later, I took my daughter to feed homeless people in London who were sleeping under bridges. When I came home, I thought, wow, I feel like I live in a palace. I've got a bed, I've got sheets, I've got heating, I've got a fridge full of food. How lucky am I? So start off from gratitude. Every day, think about what am I grateful for? I'm grateful I have kids that leave, don't put the lids on things. I go to pick up a jar and it smashes. I'm grateful I have kids. I'm grateful I have a partner who leaves their underwear on the floor. I'm grateful I have a home where something is broken. And it may sound very, very Pollyanna, but you see, whatever you focus on, you get more. When you're focusing on gratitude, I'm grateful, I'm lucky, you cannot focus on, well, they're better than me. They've got more than me. I want what they have and I can never get it. The mind cannot hold conflicting beliefs ever. It's a rule of the mind. It cannot 
hold conflicting beliefs. Therefore, if you're focusing on what you have and how wonderful it is, you have love, you have warmth, you have real friends, you have people that want to be with you, as you focus on that, you cannot focus on what you haven't got. So focus on what you've got, be grateful for what you've got, remember you're unique, there's no one like you, there never has been before, and there never will be again. And you can't compare yourself. At a wedding I was at once, I had a rather overweight cousin who was marrying a very skinny guy, and my grandmother said, well, she's found her lid. Everyone has their lid. You are someone's lid. You are someone's fantasy dream come true as a partner, as a friend, as a parent, as a colleague. You are someone's fantasy. Someone somewhere thinks you are the best thing in the whole world. See yourself through the eyes of your children or your parents or your friends or your partner. Stop comparing yourself. Be grateful. Remember, we are all flawed people having flawed relationships with flawed people. That is the best you can ever be. And when you go, well, this is great. That's good. You mean I can be flawed? I don't have to be perfect? Yes. Being perfect is a race you enter with no finishing line ever. As you get near to it, it moves and it moves again. And I can tell you now that skipping a beat in 33 years, my clients were the most unhappy were always the ones who try to be perfect. They were also the loneliest because people don't like that. They like warm, real people with flaws just like you, just like me. Be yourself, be the best you can be. No comparing, no envy. You are someone's fantasy. When you know that, it changes everything. So if you want to rewire yourself and overcome feelings of jealousy, envy, inadequacy, and unworthiness, click the link below to listen to my hypnosis audio. If you enjoyed that video, check out the next one right here. You can also click the link below right here for your free gift. The difference between success and failure is often nothing more than this. People who have success also have self-discipline.